Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech and I'm bringing you third part of the series uh, Node-RED for Beginners and today we're going to create actual first flow. Now if you don't know how to use Node-RED I'd strongly recommend you to check the previous video or previous article which will explain everything you need to know to get started with Node-RED uh, including the layout. So if you find this a little bit confusing or this video a little bit too slow please do check the previous vi uh, video first. If you know about the Node-RED a little bit, you've made few flows and you're only interested in the data transfer between flows and details uh, in regards to how it happens, that's the subject for the next video, so uh, that's going to be posted soon as well. In this video, we're going to focus on the first flow. The flow itself, it's not going to be very useful uh, because uh, I've picked a scenario that contains different nodes with different options and it transforms the data in a different ways but it doesn't use any external devices because I'm not sure what devices you have access to. So I wanted to keep it contained so you don't have to install anything new or add any um, new devices. So let's get started. Here is the ready setup, but we're going to go stage by stage so you could understand what's going on. So I'm going to recreate it below and then we're going to test it. So first I'm using some sort of input and input is always a good way to start. Uh, for this, I'm going to use two input nodes because they're going to show you that you can enter more than one source of information into your flow. So uh, there's a few options we can configure. So I want uh, to uh, have a payload, which is a number. So let's pick a number and number 15. And I don't want anything extra, but I want to have a topic, which is value. And I'm going to duplicate this node and I want second value to be 9. Now we're going to detect the difference in values. So to detect the difference in values, I'm going to use a switch node. So there's a switch node in here. And as you can see, the switch node has only one input and one output. However, in a second, it will change because what I'm going to press is add. So if I've added a second output and you'll see that in a second, I'm going to have a two different outputs to use. So in the first case, I want the value to be less or equals to 10. In other case, I want it to be bigger than 10. So if it's lower than 10, it's going to go to the first upper value, which is indicated here. And if it's uh, higher than 10, it's going to go to the number two. So switch. Great. And you can see it has two outputs. So let's connect it together. All you have to do is just drag a line from one node to another and you're connected. Now, since we connected and we've got this value, let's assign a topic. I've assigned a topic in here, which was value, but it didn't say anything about what kind of value is it. So what I'm going to uh, use is a change node and I'm going to change the topic. So as you can see, I can set the topic if uh, the data are going to hit this node, I can set the different topic. So if it goes up, this is a low value. So if my value is low, which is a number one, it's going to connect to this node. But I'm going to copy this and paste it and modify it. If my value is high, let me just modify this. We're changing a topic as well, that's correct. And that's high here, just the name, so we would understand. Then we're gonna connect to this node instead. So the information travels from uh, the input node, hitches our switch node, switch nodes decide whether the value is high or low, and then it hits the set node that sets the property, which is in this case, topic and uh, changes the overrides the value of the topic so instead of value it will put in low uh, put a low value in high it's going to put high value okay so we've got this step completed now we're going to use another very popular a very powerful node which is a function node as you can see function node doesn't have anything uh, in it by default you will just return the message that you received so it doesn't do anything uh, let's leave it as it is but what i'm going to do i'm going to make all the information goes back to a function node. And let me just steal the code and explain it so I don't have to type it for you. 
it uses a JavaScript to manipulate the code. And obviously that can be as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. And in this case, we're going to keep it simple. First, I'm going to create a variable, which I'm going to call value. In this variable, I'm going to store whatever just came to that function node. So in this case, entire message payload. So in this case, because I'm pressing 15 or nine, the payload's gonna be number 15 or number nine. And depending on the payload, that number is gonna be stored in the new uh, part of the message transferred, which, is, which I'm gonna call volume. And that value is gonna uh, have a value of uh, obviously the variable value, and then I'm gonna return entire message. What it means is that when I'm sending a message between different nodes, the payload message gets manipulated and changed and overwritten. However, if I assign that uh, payload or that value or any other value to a separate uh, part of that message, so in, in this case, I just called it value, um, then this message is not going to be modified. So I can still manipulate the payload, but the message value is going to stay the same. And then at the end, I'm just returning the message and passing, over, passing it over to the second output. So we have this. Uh, another easy way to manipulate your payload is a template. What template does, you're going to see in a second when I connect everything. So I'm sending a payload and I'm sending my value. I could use all of it to uh, put it into a template. But for the sake of this example, we have here a mustache template, which basically means that whatever you want to enter as a payload, uh, you just use the double bracket. So we have the val, let's say, this is, oh, actually, you know what? Because I already did that and I'm not going to be uh, typing it. I'm just going to copy it and explain. So what happened is uh, I'm entering some string and after string, I'm going to use topic. As you remember, topic has been set by the, uh, by the change nodes and it's either it's going to be high value or low value. So that message will say, this is, for example, if I hit 15 high value, and equals to payload in that case is 15. And if I hit nine, it's gonna say low value here and then nine in here. So that's what it does and this is how you enter it. You drop that, remember you drop the message part so you don't type the msg dot topic, you just put topic in this case. So this is the mustache template, but you can also use the plain text, etc. And we are setting a payload, so we're not modifying this one. Make it pretty. Done. Okay, great. Uh, now, lastly, we need some sort of output. And in this case, I'm just going to use a debug node. Debug node, it's going to display the information to the debug window, which is here. And it's just going to tell us what happened. So before we add any additional uh, debug nodes to, to explain the process in detail, let's just run it and see what's happened, shall we? I'm just going to deploy this. And now if I press the 15, I'm expecting a, a high value of 15. The new value is high value and equals 15. Excellent. If I press nine, I should get the opposite, which is low value and nine. And the new value is low value and equals to nine. Excellent. So first thing to, to pay attention to is there is a node in here, that node name it's gonna, when you highlight or move your mouse over it, it's gonna highlight the, the debug node that display this information. So as you can see the message payload in here, this one highlights when I uh, move, uh, move my mouse over it and they'll help you uh, to investigate problems with your flow. Now let's uh, open this uh, debug and let's change the message type. From the message, I want to receive a complete message object because right now I'm only receiving a payload part of it. You can see that the low value in here or high value in here is the new topic that has been assigned. And obviously this is a string which has this um, the, these characters in it, but I can display it as a complete message object. So let's deploy changes. And now when I'm gonna press the value, you'll see that the message looks much differently. So let me open this. So we have a, our object, which is a message, and it has our topic, 
which is a high value, our payload, which is the new value is high value and equals 15, and also value which we assigned using a function node, which is 15, and we can use it. So we, in here we have a string, in here we have a number, and in here we have a change topic. So this is our message object. I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, data manipulation a little bit later on. So let's add a couple of uh, different debug nodes and see what's happen and how they look like. So first one, I'm just gonna uh, display a topic. So instead of displaying a payload, can display assigned topic topic and at this stage it's going to be this topic which is just value so let's deploy this clear the notification and let's hit 15. you see our topic from this node it gets highlighted when i move the mouse in here and it is value but i remember that i've assigned a new topic using these two nodes so let's see how it changes for both of them so i've connected it all gonna deploy this gonna deactivate this node so it wouldn't give us a different results deploy it again now if i press high you see the first one which is this one it gives us a value second one which is this one it gives us a high value so the topic has been changed successfully by us now let's add another node and then we're gonna see the switch how the how the switch behaves so i have hooked it up both outputs so it doesn't matter which one i'm gonna use i'm gonna get some sort of value let me clear this one and deactivate these ones for the time being so as you can see right now the payload is just 15. there is no other information in here if i switch to the object and deploy it and click 15 again there is only topic and there is only payload. There was no value like previously at the end of the uh, um, our flow. So let me go back to the message payload. Done and deploy it. And lastly, what we want to have a look at is another debug, debug node connected to our function. Deploy. By default, you're just going to get the, uh, the payload. So if you if you remember, we were assigning this to the message value, not the message payload. So if you're going to connect and only listen to the payload, you're not going to get anything other than 15 in here. So let's uh, try it again. As you can see, this is uh, this node and it has a value of 15. So there is no information about um, the value because we didn't ask for it. However, if I going to type value, that value is still stored in a message and you will see that uh, it will still display the 15 as a value. So let's hit it again. And this is this node and it displays as a message value in here. As you can see, it's not a message payload like in here and it's 15. And lastly, we can take a look at the and uh, let's have a look what template says. Template just should give us a string, nothing else because that's what it outputs. So when I hit 15, I get the string, which is a has, has um, topic, which is high value, message payload, which is the new value is high value and equals to 15. So basically this is how Node-RED operates and that's how the information is being transferred from one way, from one uh, node to another. And that's how you can process it. Obviously I'm not going to go over every single function in here, but if you want to read about the function, always use the info tab because when you click on it, it will give you some sort of information about how to use that node. So as you can see, when I press on the switch node, it will give me information about the switch node and how it works, etc. So I hope that's a little bit clearer for you. And if you're looking for a data processing in details, that's what's going to happen in the next video. So that's how it works. Basically, you should be able to start with your own flows and start uh, making your own designs. Now I'm going to be talking in detail on how the message is constructed, what's the database and uh, how to retrieve the messages, how to store the messages, how to process the information in the messages in the next video. I'm also going to have a follow up uh, kind of separate tutorial on JSON files because JSON files are going to be very important for Node-RED. And uh, I'm going to do like a one-off uh, JSON tutorial 
just to get everyone started uh, to, to understand the JSON and why JSON is actually quite cool. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you know any people that love Node-RED or would benefit from Node-RED, just share this video tutorial and encourage them to get the $5 Raspberry Pi and start their own server. Um, as usual, just uh, you know, follow me for the updates on the social media, uh, subscribe to my channel, do all the goodies, social interactions, and I'll be very happy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see you in the next video, so until then, take care. Bye.